The Yamaha AS501 is simple to use, sounds great, and looks awesome, especially in silver. Thanks for watching, take care, bye bye. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about my initial impressions, how this thing sounds, and also doing some measurements to let you know what these dials in the front do. I also wanna let you know where you can get this, and that's at our show sponsor, Worldwide Stereo. Whether you're starting off with the AS301, the 60 watt version of this amplifier, or the AS801, the 100 watt per channel version of this amplifier, or the AS501 that I have here in silver, they've got you covered. If you're in the Pennsylvania area, you can visit one of their stores. If you're not, they have an online shop and they have a price match guarantee. Most places give you a 30 day guarantee. These guys offer 60 days, so you really get a chance to try out the product to see if you really like it. Don't forget about their monthly sweepstakes. This month, they're actually announcing three winners. One is for the Bowers & Wilkins PX7 over-ear headphones. The other prize is for the PX5 on-ear headphones. And the third prize is for the PI4 in-ear headphones. All of these are wireless and offer active noise cancellation. List of the sweepstakes and the products will be down in the description. So Yamaha sent this out and I've been testing it out for the past few weeks. This is gonna be about my personal experience with this amplifier. And there are a few things that I wasn't able to test out. One was the phono stage. The other was the subwoofer output. And third are the pre outs on the back. I do plan on keeping this long term. So I hopefully will be able to answer some of those questions down the line. If you're interested in specs, I did do an unboxing video where I read through some of the most important specs and I'll leave a link to that right there. As far as the looks on this thing, I love the way it looks. It looks old school. Anybody who disagrees, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It just reminds me of my Marantz receiver. It had a silver face. This has a silver face. It's aluminum on the front. I think it looks awesome. The only thing that it's missing, and I'm nitpicking here, is I wish it had VU meters. They do have it on some of their more expensive models. The only thing is that the knobs on this are plastic. Initially, I had thought that the volume and the input selector were aluminum. After a close inspection, they are actually plastic as well. I think the big appeal to this integrated amplifier is that it is simple to use. It doesn't try to do too much, and the things that it does try to do, it does really well. Let's look at the front panel and take a look at what each of these things does from left to right. First is the power switch. When you turn this thing on, you hear the sound of the relays clicking on and off, and I think that sounds awesome. This does also have a standby mode, so if you don't use the amplifier for eight hours straight, it turns itself to standby, and you can turn it on using the remote as long as the power button is pushed in. To the right of that, you'll see a quarter inch headphone jack. I did test this out with a few of my headphones. None of them are really hard to drive, so they all sounded good, especially my in-ear monitors. Those are very low resistance, and I found that on certain devices, you kind of hear a hiss because of that. On this, it was silent, so I was happy about that. To the right of that, you see an AB selector switch, and that's if you wanna choose between two sets of speakers. That might be very handy for me if I'm comparing two different speakers. You can also use that to buy wire. I'm not a big fan, unless you're using some super thin wire for whatever reason, but the option is there. Then you have your bass and treble tone controls, and this is, again, where simplicity comes into play. I'm with the thought, like Steve Jobs, that the hardest thing is to make something simple. And that's what they did here. Bass and treble is more like salt and pepper, right? It just, you season to taste. And with just those two things, you feel confident because you can't really mess that up. Now, if I gave you 31 condiments, you might feel like, ooh, I don't know, should I use parsley or thyme or what, what, what do all these things do? And you have more of a chance to mess that whole thing up versus something as simple as just bass and treble, aka salt and pepper, right? Now let's take a look at exactly what the bass and treble controls do. Here are some measurements. You also have your balance control, just in case one speaker for whatever reason is somewhat louder than the other. And then you'll see this loudness control, and this is a variable loudness control, and it's confusing to a lot of people. Initially what I thought it was, was something that I've seen on other receivers where you would set the volume control, you set the loudness, and it would adjust based on how loud you have it. So if you turn it down, it might adjust the loudness curve. And the reason for that is that our ears actually hear the bass and treble differently at different volumes. So when you turn down the volume, you have a harder time hearing bass and treble, and so a lot of amplifiers will compensate for that. What this is actually doing is it's made for you to set it based on the volume you're listening to it at that time. So it doesn't adjust, it doesn't change, and I'll show you here.
loudness is at, at half right now. And there's the curve. So let me stop this, get a baseline. All right, cool. So let me do it again. And I'm gonna change the volume up and down and let's see if it's, it keeps the same curve or if the curve, if the response actually changes. Okay, so it looks like it's retaining the same curve here. Turn it all the way up. Okay, so there it is. It looks like that it's not variable, so it just sets the contour and it just stays there, so it's static. So what this is actually doing is it's actually reducing the mids with the point being at that point where our ears are most sensitive. You can kind of think of that as a mid-range control. I find that it's actually pretty useful and I've used it. I don't mind keeping it on and I found that in certain cases it does sound better. They also have a pure direct mode so if you're not into bass and treble and tone controls you can bypass all that circuitry and just use this purely as an amplifier. Now I have a theory about this actually and I think that if you're doing some critical listening yes it's nice to do that pure direct mode and just get that pure sound right but sometimes you're just kind of just walking around the house and listening casually and maybe singing along and in those cases, I've kind of found that using that loudness selector and turning that to a certain level, I found that that was more pleasing to my ears. And I was thinking about it, it's kind of just cutting out the mid range, right? So it's cutting out the vocals. That makes it easier to sing along to, doesn't it? I don't know, I'm Filipino. A lot of us like to do karaoke, not me. When you use those karaoke machines, they cut out the vocals, right? I don't know, maybe there's something there. Leave a comment if you think that that might be the case. Maybe not, maybe I'm just, Maybe it's a long shot, I don't know. Now we get to the input selector. You have four analog inputs. You have coax and optical if you wanna go that route. That's handy if you wanna connect it to a TV. You also have a connection in case you wanna connect this to a turntable. It can support a moving magnet cartridge. And then we get to the volume control. That's the biggest knob here and that's what you'll probably be using most of the time. This one is motorized so when you change the volume on the remote, you actually see the dial moving. This does have hard stops so you can tell when you're at the very beginning and at the very end, I've never tried it max volume, but uh, yeah, you can if you want to. One thing I notice about this is that there's a fine level of control, meaning that it's a long throw from very low from all the way off to all the way up. And that gives you a, just a finer sense of control over the volume. And that's not something to be underestimated. What I mean by that is that, I don't know if you've ever used a device where, you know, there were big steps between the volume, right? So you couldn't really dial it in and get the perfect volume that you wanted. With this, you can really get it just to that right amount of volume. And that's, it's huge. That makes a big difference. Also, there's something psychological about having that long throw. It feels like you're turning it up more. I don't know, something weird about that. Also, the other thing is that when you mute this on the remote, it doesn't actually completely turn the volume off. It just attenuates it. And by attenuate, it's not to a specific level, it's just down from where you were initially. The remote here has a lot of buttons, but I didn't use most of them. Just the power button to turn it on and off, maybe the mute button once in a while, but mostly I was just using it for volume control. And pure direct, yeah. I pressed that pure direct button quite a few times. So onto my listening impressions, I did have this connected to my Chromecast audio using an optical cable. I also had this connected to my MacBook Pro through the Bailey preamp, which is a two preamp, going into this through analog. This is a class AB amplifier rated 80 watts per channel. And I'm so happy about the way that they rated this. These are real watts. So when they say 80 watts, it is at a very low total harmonic distortion. It reminds me of my old vintage amplifier where it says 20 watts, but for some reason it sounds more powerful than some of the amplifiers nowadays that are 100 watts. So yes, this does have clean power, it has clean sound. I mean, I think that this will be able to drive a lot of different speakers, whether they're four ohm, six ohm, eight ohm, I think this can handle it. So this is a very basic amplifier. They didn't have to pay any licensing fees. There's no HDMI. And because of that, you just get a good amplifier. They're using quality components in this. This is a symmetrical topology. Not sure what that means, but it does look cool. All I can say is that after listening to this with different speakers, whether it was the Mica RB42s, these ELAC debut reference, my Wharfdale Den 85th anniversary, they all sounded good. I didn't have listening fatigue. It just made me want to turn it up and listen for longer periods of time. So the Yamaha AS501, I love this thing. Thank you Yamaha for sending it out. 
I'm gonna be testing this out more. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. If I don't have the answer right now, I'll make sure to try to get it down the road. As of right now, this is my favorite two channel amplifier. Unless they send me the one with the VU meters, that will probably be my favorite. <laughs> so I'll leave a link below to purchase this if you're interested. If you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. And thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thank you for allowing me to do what I love here on YouTube. If you're not already a supporter, check me out at patreon.com forward slash Joe Anyway, that's it. Take care. Bye-bye.